Hi, I'm Barbara Selig Brown. Welcome to Stress Free Cooking. Today on Stress Free Cooking, we're going to be making my mother's meatballs, and we're also going to put a twist on several other meatball recipes. We'll make an eggplant meatless meatball, and we'll also make a chicken Caesar meatball. So you'll have a variety of choices when you want to reach for some meatballs. But before I start cooking, I'd like to welcome my dear friend, Tom Beyer. Tom and I cook together all the time, and he is a great sous chef. Mm -hmm. Welcome, great Tom. Great to be here. Thank you. <laughs> so let's get started with the eggplant for our eggplant meatballs. So the first thing we're going to do is cut off the top of the eggplant and the bottom, and then we're going to slice it into about half inch slices. And then we're going to stack up a couple of those slices and dice them. We don't want them too big because they have to be incorporated into our meatball mixture. So we'll just put this in the bowl. I'm going to sprinkle a little salt and pepper on it. I like to salt my eggplant because it'll bring the moisture out of the eggplant and the eggplant won't absorb as much oil. Eggplant is like a sponge and when you put oil with your eggplant, it absorbs a lot of the oil. So not to have a really heavy eggplant meatball, we're going to salt the eggplant, bring the moisture to the surface. It'll create a barrier so that it doesn't absorb as much eggplant. So Tom, how about if you give me a little bit of eggplant? What does the eggplant actually do for the meat? Well, we're going to replace the ground meat or ground turkey or ground chicken with the roasted eggplant. So it's basically the same meatball mixture. We have our bread, our cheese, our parsley, our onion, our eggs, but we're replacing the meat with the eggplant. And it's really a nice, light texture. I really enjoy this. And some people might not think it sounds great, but you really have to try it. So it's now a vegetarian meatball? It's a vegetarian meatball. Not vegan, not but vegan. vegetarian. Vegetarian. Okay. OK. So would you like to do some of this for me? And also, a sharp knife is your best friend. I know a lot of people are afraid that if their knives are too sharp, that they're going to get hurt. But actually, if your knife is not sharp, it's more dangerous. So a sharp knife is your best friend. So a couple of those stacked up, and then I would cut those into about four strips, and then cut them again, yeah, about three times or four times, and throw them in this bowl with our salted eggplant. Okay. And then we'll toss this around. And this is going to go on a parchment lined baking sheet. So we'll grab some extra virgin olive oil, heart healthy. We'll toss this around. And I just need a little bit more of that eggplant. Okay. Please. Since Italian food is always my favorite, I thought that this would be a nice variation on a meatball because we do have a lot of vegetarian friends. And so this is a lighter twist on a meatball. And also, I've had this in some really high-end Italian restaurants, and so I've tried to copy that a little bit for you. Okay, so we'll toss this a little bit, okay? And then this goes on a baking sheet. This baking sheet's lined with parchment so that I can use less oil. It also prevents the eggplant from sticking to the pan, and it gives you a lot easier cleanup. So this will go into a 450 convection oven and roast until golden. Depending on your oven, it could be 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Keep your eye on it, and you just want to make sure that it's golden brown. OK, so now we're ready to start the marinara sauce for our traditional grandma's meatballs. So to do that, Tom, what we're going to do is I'm going to have you uh, crush some of this garlic for me. So I want two cloves of garlic and we'll take our chef's knife and just give it a little bit of a whack with your chef's knife. And it almost chops it for me. It does, right. But since the pieces are a little big, I'm just going to take my chef's knife and chop it like this. Okay, so this will go into our pan with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And I know you always worry when I have a knife in my hand. I do. <laughs> after the Lorraine Bobbitt special. <laughs> so, a little extra virgin olive oil in our pan, just enough so that we can saute this garlic. And once it becomes fragrant, I know I can add my tomatoes. 
You don't want your garlic to get too brown or even black because then it becomes bitter. If it becomes black, start over. It's worth the effort of starting over because you really don't want that bitter garlic flavor in there. Okay, so Tom, you can throw that right in here. And I can smell it already. So in another minute or two, we'll be adding our crushed tomatoes. And what we use are just a really good, high quality crushed tomato, San Marzano from Italy. You can do your own tomatoes in the summer, which we often do. But you know, since it's not summertime, we really are relegated to using this can, a couple of cans of high quality crushed tomatoes. So while we're waiting for our garlic to get to the right color, it's becoming very fragrant. You can see the olive oil is bubbling away. Isn't the aroma great? And the, the thing you want to remember is it's going to take a few minutes to get hot enough, but then once it does, keep your eye on it. So we're going to add our tomatoes and a nice easy way of adding your tomatoes so that you don't splash all over your kitchen is to pour it over a spoon. It sort of breaks the fall into the pan so that it doesn't splash all over your kitchen. And garlic is a wonderful ingredient for so many dishes. And garlic takes on different flavors. So when it's raw, it's kind of hot and sort of burning. Then you saute it, it becomes a little sweeter. And then if you roast it, it becomes even milder. And the other night we did um, pizza with roasted garlic. And that was wonderful, yes. And roasted garlic is really easy to do. You just take a clove of a uh, head of garlic, cut the top off, wrap it in foil, and put it in your oven until it feels soft. And then you just squeeze it out. So it's really simple to do and worth the extra few minutes that it takes. Okay, so I think we're gonna just let this cook. And then Tom, we should start our meatballs. So I'm gonna give you this bowl. And what we're gonna do first is let's have you add the breadcrumbs. Okay. And the reason I do it this way is I like to mix all of the meatball ingredients before I add the meat because we don't wanna overwork the meat. So if I mix everything else together first, then when I add the meat, I work the meat just a little bit less. So Tom, we're gonna to put two eggs in there and we wanna crack our egg on a hard surface, on a flat surface, not the side of the bowl. And we're gonna add some Parmesan cheese once those eggs are in there. Okay, so we have our eggs in the bowl. Now let's add that red wine, about half of that red wine. What we're trying to do here is moisten the meatballs. And then we're gonna add some of that Parmesan cheese. And we have a little bowl, yep, all of that. We have a little bowl with salt and pepper mixed together. It's a great tip for your kitchen. If most of your dishes use salt and pepper, you can mix the salt and pepper together in a little bowl. And then when we're cooking, we pinch. We don't shake a salt shaker or a pepper shaker over anything. Because if you're shaking it into a pan, your salt shaker will get all sticky from the steam. So Tom, I need about two pinches of that salt and pepper blend in there. And then we need to do, we need to chop an onion and we need to chop our parsley. So we can mix this up first. And then while we're chopping the onion and chopping the parsley, the breadcrumbs are gonna be softening from the egg and the red wine. That looks great. You can feel how soft it is? Good. And those were fresh breadcrumbs. We had a loaf of Italian bread left one night and I tossed it in my food processor and once they were chopped up, we put it in the freezer. So we have fresh homemade breadcrumbs. Now it's time to add our onion to our breadcrumb mixture. So when you start to chop an onion, you wanna cut it in half. Anything that's round, you wanna make flat. So I cut my onion in half. And then what I'm gonna do is cut off the stem end and leave the root end intact so that when I cut the onion, it's easier. So we'll take the stem end off. We'll take the outer peel off. So once we have the peel off, then we make some vertical cuts, some horizontal cuts. And then we just cut across and we get 
a nice dice. Okay, so this onion is now gonna go into our breadcrumb mixture. And we're right down to the stem, so I'm just gonna take a rough chop over this. Okay. Just in case there's any pieces in there that are a little bigger. Okay, and we can scrape it up with our knife. Tom, I'll let you mix that up again. Okay. You can use your hands. Your hands are your best kitchen tools. Okay, that looks good. So we'll set that aside while we chop the parsley. So just take some nice dry parsley. If your parsley is dry, it will chop a lot finer and it will be a lot a lot nicer in your dish. So we're just gonna take some dry parsley. I washed this and dried it with a paper towel. Okay? And just give it a nice rough chop. Okay, we'll just see how that looks. It's about right, don't you think? Yes, looks good. All right, so this can go back into our breadcrumb mixture. And we'll mix this around, and then finally, it will be time for us to add the meat. All righty, so once that's all mixed, mixed evenly, we're gonna get our meat, and we're gonna add some of this. Okay, and you can just start adding it, yeah. Okay, I would say we don't need quite all of that. All right, so we added about a pound of ground round. I usually use a little bit leaner meat, although if you do use a meat that is about 85%, you will get a little juicier meatball, but we're always watching our fat calories. So we're using a very lean ground beef. So once that's all mixed together, what we're going to do is take another parchment lined baking sheet, and we are gonna roast our meatballs in the oven. You can fry them, but I like to roast them in the oven, saves a few calories, makes it a little healthier, and plus it's a little bit less messy. <laughs> and we can save our calories for the wine. That's right. <laughs> yes. Okay, so just, yeah, there you go. And once these are on the baking sheet, they'll brown nicely. And again, we're using that parchment paper so that we don't need to add any oil to the pan. It'll give us easier cleanup, and it's just a really great tool. Okay, so we'll get these in the oven. And again, I like to use a convection oven. If you don't have convection, it's not a problem. It's just that convection ovens have a fan in them, so it circulates the heat more evenly. It keeps a more even temperature. And we're gonna roast these at about 450 convection, but you could do this at 450 in a traditional non-convection oven. It'll just take a little bit longer. So that's great. So usually from a pound of meat, we get about 11 or 12 meatballs. So here we have 12, it's perfect. Once these are baked, we're gonna put these into our marinara sauce. Okay, let's clean up a little bit and then we're gonna go back to our eggplant meatballs. Cake Bread Cellars was founded in 1973 by Jack and Dolores Cake Bread. It's been famous for its warm, gracious hospitality and unmatched wines. They believe that life's occasions are elevated by good people, good food, and good wine, which flows through everything they do. Sharing these tenets and this journey with us not only brings great joy, but also gives motivation to always look to improve. They take great pride in sharing their family with our families. Oh wow, that is so delicious. I can really taste the floral. I have some peach notes in here. Well balanced. It's delicious. 
For more information about these wines, visit cakebread.com. Okay, our eggplant should be just about done, so we have to reset our workstation. And what I always like to do with a cutting board that's of this acrylic material is put a damp paper towel under, so it keeps your cutting board from sliding across your granite countertop, and that way you have a lot more stability when you're chopping or cutting. So Tom, let's start, we're gonna get ready for those eggplant meatballs. So we have our mixing bowl, we need our breadcrumbs, okay. Oh, there's a big one in there, we don't want that in there. Okay, thanks, you can take that out. So again, we have our homemade breadcrumbs, but once in a while you get a piece that's a little too big. So we need some shredded Parmesan cheese, Parmigiano Reggiano, always use the highest quality cheese that you can afford because you'll get a lot more bang for the buck. You get a lot more flavor, a lot more freshness, all of that. Yep, all of that. I'm gonna need a clove of garlic chopped. Okay. And let me give you a chef's knife, that would help. There you go. Okay, so a nice crushed clove of garlic. And we'll take that skin away and then we just give it a rough chop. That's good enough for what we're doing. This is home cooking. We're not running a fancy French restaurant. We're just cooking with love. We're cooking for our friends and family. So we're not worried about a perfect dice or a perfect mince. That looks great. Okay. So we'll add that to our breadcrumbs and Parmesan cheese. We need a couple pinches of our salt and pepper blend in there. A pinch is about an eighth of a teaspoon. So if you're measuring and you don't want to be troubled with a measuring spoon, just think about a pinch being equal to about an eighth of a teaspoon. Okay. Let's add three eggs to this mixture. And again, we don't bang the egg on the side of a bowl. You want to crack your egg on a flat surface. That way you don't push shells back into where the egg is. And then we're going to mix that up and we'll add some freshly chopped parsley. We use flat Italian parsley when we're cooking. It has a lot more flavor. Curly parsley is really great for garnishing. It holds up well as a garnish. Curly parsley was also used as a breath freshener way back when, before we had better dental care. So, okay, so let's chop that parsley and then I will start mixing this up for us. So we'll get this mixed well. And then our eggplant should be just about done and we'll be able to add it to this mixture. And these eggplant meatballs can also go into any marinara sauce that you want to make. You can eat them plain. Um, one thing that you know, I think is really nice is just sauteing some fresh tomatoes and serving it with just sauteed fresh tomatoes and basil. Okay, that looks perfect. Perfect. Okay, let me grab the eggplant. Okay, so our eggplant just came out of the oven. It's nice and golden brown, which is what we want. It probably took about 15 minutes today. Time will always vary. It depends on the size of your eggplant. It depends how much olive oil you've put on there. Depends on your oven. There are so many variables, so I don't want you to get hung up on 15 minutes exactly. I want you to think about descriptors like golden brown. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna let that cool for a minute or two, and then we'll, actually, we can mix this. Yeah, start to mix this a little bit. It's gonna be a little hot to handle, so we're gonna have to give it a couple minutes to cool off. Okay, let's see if this is gonna stick together. Perfect, okay. Because if it didn't stick together well, I could add a little bit of stock. You could add a chicken stock, a vegetable stock, a beef stock, whatever you have in the house. If you wanted this to be vegetarian, obviously we'd go with a vegetarian stock. Okay, so again, we're just gonna roll these. 
And I can feel how moist they are, which is great because the breadcrumbs are going to hold this all together. And because the eggplant was roasted, but only to the golden brown stage, it's not terribly soft or mushy. Stock is your best friend. An open container of stock in your kitchen, in your refrigerator, stock keeps about 10 days once it's opened. And whatever kind of stock you like to use, it doesn't matter, but it gets you out of a lot of little trouble spots. Perhaps you're sauteing something and it's sticking. If you hit it with a little stock or even a little wine, it will automatically release that food stuff from the pan. Okay. And the other thing, you date the stock too, so you know, right? Yes. How old it is. I always date the top of the stock. Now most of it's in cardboard containers. I keep a Sharpie in my kitchen and I label everything with a date. Even if it's something like mayonnaise or mustard, I always label it because that way if I go back to using it, if it's something I don't use often and I go back to using it and I'm concerned about how long I've had it, I just turn the jar over and I see the date on the bottom. So I'm gonna wash my hands, we'll pop these in the oven and we'll be right back. Before our meatballs come out of the oven, we want to finish our marinara sauce. So we're going to take some fresh basil and we're just going to tear it up and put it into our sauce. And I like to add the fresh basil at the end of the cooking time. That way I get the freshness of the fresh basil. If you want to use dried herbs, it's perfectly okay. The rule of thumb is one part dry equals three parts fresh. So for instance, if I needed three tablespoons of fresh basil, I would use one tablespoon of dried. So I like to keep my utensils handy, and that's why I have all these crocks around my kitchen. I have my salt and pepper out all the time. If you cook a lot, it just makes more sense to keep things handy and keep things at the ready. Okay, this should be enough basil. So I'll stir this in and yeah, we can get rid of that, okay? So we're gonna let this simmer just a second. We're gonna check on those meatballs and if the meatballs are done, we're gonna pop the beef meatballs right into our sauce. Okay, thank you. So I have my tongs. I'm just gonna pop these right into the sauce. Why are they sticking? So just slide your tongs under there. Okay, so these go into the sauce. Now, normally, if we weren't doing this on stress-free cooking, I would cook these for about an hour or so, just so that they really get full of that marinara, basil, garlic flavor. I also love to do this in my crock pot. So I would prepare the sauce on top of my stove. I would cook the meatballs in my oven, and then I would transfer all of this to my crock pot. And when you're cooking in a crock pot, you can cook on low for eight hours, or you can cook on high for four. Something like this, it doesn't matter if you cook it longer. When I used to go out to work every day and didn't work at home, I loved starting a meal in my crock pot in the morning. And then when I came home from work, I smelled that great dinner already cooked in the crock pot. And that happens to be one of your favorite right, things. Right, I like it in the crock pot too. And every time I walk through the kitchen and I lift the lid, I get that fragrance. And sometimes I have to sample one or two. Right. He's the royal taster. He makes sure that everything he is safe for the rest the of us to eat. Stuff. So shall we check on the eggplant meatballs? Okay. They look great. Yeah, that, that's fine, perfect. So to serve our eggplant meatballs, I think they look nice if we put some of the marinara sauce on a plate as a bed, and then we're going to put one of the eggplant meat, would you hold that for me? Thanks. Put some of the eggplant meatballs right on here. And I think three would look pretty. Whether I was serving these as an appetizer or whether I was serving these as a main course, 
Okay, so let's plate our Grandma Anne's meatballs. And since we're both gonna give this a taste, I guess we need two of these, right? Mm -hmm. I think this is one of your favorite things, it isn't is my it? Favorite. I ask for meatballs all the time. I love them. But I know we have a lot of friends and family who love when Tom asks for meatballs. All right, we're gonna let these cool off for just a second, and then we're gonna grab a fork and we'll give it a taste. But in the meantime, I wanna thank you, Tom, for all your help. So how about joining me okay. in a little toast? Okay. We're drinking a nice red wine. This is a Pinot Noir from Napa Valley, and it is a very food-friendly wine. It's also something that most of our friends enjoy drinking. Delicious, isn't it's it? Very nice. Yeah, delicious. So good, I'll have another sip. I'm glad you like it. Very nice. All right, let's see how these meatballs look. So I'm going to cut this in half. They're, hot. They're very hot, okay? In the meantime, the other thing that you could do with meatballs is you could substitute ground turkey or ground chicken for the meat in this meatball. Ground turkey comes two ways. You can buy it with 7% fat or you can buy ground turkey breast which has only one or 2% fat. And the thing with the ground turkey or the ground chicken is your meatballs will look a little bit white. So what I like to do if I'm doing ground turkey or ground chicken meatballs is I like to soak my breadcrumbs in red wine. It gives the meatball a lot more color. Since we eat with our eyes, I think that if you use red wine in the ground turkey or ground chicken meatballs, it makes them more appealing to people who are used to eating a beef meatball. And a little secret, I really came up with that idea because my father would not eat a turkey meatball, so I had to make it look like a beef meatball. And I know Tom and I decided after the first of the year we were going to cut back a little bit on our calories. And he asked for meatballs and I made them with turkey and he then informed me that that was not what he had in mind when he said cutting back. <laughs> so <laughs> let's have a taste and see if this meets with your approval. Fabulous. Good. Let's try the eggplant meatball now. Surprisingly good. Well, I, made... guy, I know, but you know, I like a traditional meatball. That's terrific. And I think Carly would enjoy that because she likes My vegetarian. My vegetarian daughter right. would like that. Yes, okay. absolutely. Very nice. I'm Barbara Seelig Brown. This is Tom Beyer. We love to cook together, so we call ourselves a cooking couple. Thank you so much for joining us on Stress Free Cooking. I hope that you enjoy Grandma Ann's meatballs, our fresh basil marinara sauce, or the eggplant meatballs. And Tom, I want to thank you very much. We wish everyone deliciousness, happiness, and health. Thank you for joining us.